thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, so Yep, so imagine you're an agricultural extension officer tasked with training farmers on a new practice. Uh, it's, it's a daunting challenge. Communities are large and diverse. Com uh, terrains are difficult to navigate and, uh, and, to, to, and are remote. Even in countries like India with over 100,000 extension officers of the public and private sectors, as well as Ethiopia with about 54,000 extension agents, it really is a very challenging type of practice. And there's also the issue of motivation, both for farmers to trust uh, an extension agent coming in from the outside, as well as for these extension agents who are toiling in the sun and finding that you know, less than 2% of farmers in India report uh, receiving information that they utilized uh, for themselves on their own farms from an extension agent. So at Digital Green, what we do is we partner with existing organizations both in the public, private, civil society sectors that are working with these rural communities. And we train them to produce uh, short eight to 10 minute videos that are essentially by the community for the community to exchange agricultural practices that can boost their productivity as well as health and nutrition practices that can improve these communities' qualities of lives. Uh, over the last uh, six years, we've expanded our work uh, now across seven states in India to reach out to about 150,000 farmers. And really the first questions that people ask when they watch these videos is often, what is the name of the person in the video and which village is he or she from? Really to authenticate that this is coming from somebody that they can rely on and they can trust as somebody relevant to their own practices. Now due to the limitations of electricity and internet connectivity, these videos aren't just shared sort of online, they are online on YouTube, but the way in which these videos are screened is using this device, which you see in this image, which is a battery operated mobile projector. And that video, is uh, screened by somebody from the community to essentially connect what people are seeing with what they were doing and to connect the information with various types of products and services that might be needed to take action on that information that people are exposed to. And this isn't just a one-time screening, but rather these small groups of about 15 to 20 individuals, primarily here in India, women self-help groups that are watching these videos every two weeks, uh, that they're watching these videos successively based on seasonal considerations and based on geographics or sensitivities to be appropriate at the right time and the right place about practices that people can actually adopt at the time that they watch these programs. And as these videos are being screened by these facilitators at the village level, these facilitators are also recording data about what videos folks are watching, the questions that they have, the interests about what they like, what they don't like, what else they want to see, and the practices that they actually change or, or adopt for themselves in their own lives or on their own farms. And we found that this approach can actually improve the efficiency of these existing agricultural extension systems uh, of both the public and private sectors by a factor of 10 times per uh, rupee spent. Over the last two years, we've extended our approach into parts of uh, sub-Saharan Africa, now into parts of Ethiopia, Ghana, and Tanzania. And what we found is that there's a lot of, been a lot of learnings as we've uh, begun these extensions into the uh, African context. In places like in Ethiopia, where there might not be such a strong base of, of self-help groups, we've begun to work uh, with these development groups that the Ministry of Agriculture has helped mobilize. And we're working with the development agents, which are the extension agents of the Ministry of Agriculture, to help facilitate these types of conversations amongst these farmer groups. Uh, and there's a lot more learnings that we're having, but in, in the next two years, we're planning to scale up our approach to reach out to about 150,000 farmers to essentially demonstrate evidence about this approach uh, and to be able to get incorporated uh, into the country's next five-year growth transformation plan. Uh, and as we do so, we're also trying to see how we can make these links, both with the private sector, uh, as well as into other sort of domains like health and nutrition as well. And this would essentially follow along the lines of our, the way that we are scaling up our wor work here in India, where, where we've entered into a partnership with the Ministry of Rural Development, and we're in the process of scaling up our work to reach out to about 10,000 farmers and about a million farmers by the end of 2015. And we see a lot of opportunity for sharing as we're building out this sort of knowledge platform that now comprises 2,800 videos in 20 different languages uh, from both Ethiopia uh, and India, and as well as some of these other countries in which we're working. What we've essentially found is that you know, technology itself is not going to be able to close this so-called 
sort of digital divide between the developing and developing developed world contexts. Really for us, bringing together technology with the social organizations of partners, whether they be of the private or public sectors, and seeing how, they can, how it can provide a role in terms of amplifying the effectiveness of these existing sort of development efforts and broaden the participation of the communities that they're working with, that's really where video can then serve as a, of a starting point Point to create this spark of curiosity within these communities to improve the, their lives and those around them. So that's Digital Green. <laughs> You've joined us here today and, and uh, uh, and, and, if you, and, and if you see an opportunity to partner with them, then please articulate it. Um, while you're thinking of questions for Rick, and I'm going to lead with one, uh, I, I found it really interesting that you're collecting data from facilitators at the field level. I wanted to ask what you do with this data, uh, and also if there are uh, differences and similarities you're seeing between the data collected here in India and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, so, so there's a variety of types of data that we're collecting. Mainly it's this data about who is watching what video, what do they like, what do they not like, and what practices do they actually adopt or change for their own lives. And so there's varying types of sort of aggregations of this data set that we have uh, displayed or visualized into different sort of products that we have on our site. So you can actually, for example, see at an individual farmer level this data about what videos did one member of these self-help groups watch over the course of time, and out of that set, what practices did she adopt, and how does that compare with her peer group? And that's really useful for reflection at the village level to think about why did one woman adopt one practice versus another, and perhaps there's an opportunity to bring these two individuals together to share. Then we have other types of data, which is aggregate statistics at a, at a district or a state or national level. And that's really useful to identify what are the most popular videos or what's the adoption rate in the last two months of the folks that are watching these videos. And that's useful for really like programmatic monitoring to really see like what sort of value for money, for example, are you actually uh, contributing. Uh, with respect to your impact. And then we also have uh, visualizations around the videos. So you can see all the 2,800 videos uh, uh, organized with this data about how many people watched the video and how many people adopted the practice and what were their, their questions that they expressed. And that's really useful for the district level teams to think about what new videos might be produced based on like these questions that are uh, being received and what might opportunities be between sharing videos across districts where there might be some relevance. Great, thank you. Audience question. Yes, hello there. I'm Cedric Schulich from DFID, and I just wanted to ask you <clears throat> to what extent uh, this um, approach to spreading information um, could be picked up commercially by extension providers in time to actually scale it up, um, you know, for to, to, to an entire country, for example. Yeah, that's a good question. So, so we do have some private sector collaborations that we're working with uh, here in India, like with groups like uh, JK Paper, with Mahendra and Mahendra, uh, which are using this approach to essentially improve the efficiency of their existing extension sort of systems. We found that even these private sector organizations, they sometimes are spending 400 US dollars to, to conduct their training programs with one individual farmer per year. And that's very inefficient. So they're trying to use this approach to support that. But what we've, I guess, so far seen is that we're, in, at least in India, uh, we're still in a transition zone where the private sector is just not at the level of scale of being able to work with these small scale farmers uh, of sort of rain-fed tribal communities. And that's really where the government has a lot more role to play as well as the civil society sort of sector. And that's why we've partnered primarily with them but as you know, this shift starts occurring, then that's where you know, we're, we're working much more with commercial entities who see this approach not as something that farmers have to pay for, but this is a, rather some, an approach that can improve the efficiency of their private extension systems that they are looking to procure various types of produce or commodities from. 